temperance. Let's talk about it. What's going on, church fam? It's Church Life bringing y'all another video. I pray y'all are having a wonderful day. So recently, the Heavenly Father placed the word temperance in my spirit, and it means to have self-control or to restrain ourselves from certain stuff that can lead to bad behavioral habits, such as overeating, overuse of alcohol beverages, or any type of substance that can lead to some sort of addiction. In other words, it's a constant reminder for us to remember to do things in moderation. The goal of temperance is to learn how to be more aware of our thought process in order to make wiser decisions. So there's a few scriptures that come to mind that highlights this practice. James 1 verse 19, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. In order to do those three things, we got to do what Lord Jesus said do in Matthew 5, verse 39. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. In other words, we must master the art of keeping our composure in hostile situations and be kind to those who aren't kind to us. Because what's most likely to happen when people are mean to you for no reason, but you didn't respond in the way they thought you would, in most cases, it makes them feel bad about themselves and their actions. So because you didn't respond or react to them and you restrain yourself, you get to hold on to your dignity. But if you would allow yourself to lose self-control or the lack of temperance, it could escalate the situation to a point that causes more bad than good. And that's why it's important to forgive. So how do we have more temperance in our lives? Step one, fasting. This is one of the most prominent ways to practice more temperance or restraint because this process will enable us to build a tolerance against the desires of the flesh so that we may live more in the spirit. It also encourages more discipline in our daily lives because the more we have a healthy routine with spending time with the Heavenly Father as we fast and pray, the more we can withstand the lustful nature of the flesh. It also influences better eating habits so that we don't overindulge ourselves with the food that we consume. And it can also promote healing in the body and in our minds. So consider fasting, but when you do, keep it all confidential alongside of your prayer, because whatever you do in secret, God will reward you openly. Step two, more patience. Always consider having patience, not only with yourself, but also with others. Remember, every problem has a solution. Sometimes all we have to do is take time to slow our thoughts down to assess the situation, because sometimes the answer might be right in front of us. But the lack of patience may cause more turmoil in our lives. So to maintain a level head in a situation that requires patience, be slow to speak, meaning every comment doesn't need a response. But if you do have to say something, always listen to gain more clarity. This will help you say what's most important instead of wasting time on what's not. And always remember, rushing to a destination won't get you there any faster if you crash out along the way. So take your time on this journey to acquire more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from God. Because it's not about how fast we get somewhere, it's about taking one step at a time to learn. Step three, doing moderation. Now, what's important to avoid stuff that could potentially be harmful to our overall health? But sometimes we can overdo stuff that's not particularly unhealthy for us because anything that we overdo has the potential to be bad for us if we don't do in moderation, meaning we still could potentially overeat healthy food or overexercise or we could stay on these devices too long, even if it's for work purposes. And sometimes when we stay on social media too long or the internet too long, it can lead to other bad habits that you're trying to restrain yourself from. So we gotta always remember to take breaks. We gotta take those rest breaks. Give yourself time to recover so you won't overindulge and potentially cause a habit that's hard to break later on. And plus, Lord Jesus said, after you labor, 
come to him and he will give you rest. So even Lord Jesus say, we got to rest. The reason why it's so important for us to do stuff in moderation, though, is because everything has the potential to become an unhealthy habit if we ever get to the point of overindulgence. So these are just a few steps on how to practice more temperance. And as I do my research, I've learned that a lot of this has to do with our mindset. I say that to say this. If you want to have more self-control, more discipline, more restraint, more temperance, we must be careful with the stuff we entertain ourselves with. Because a lot of the times, that's the source of the problem. If we entertain an argument, that can cause us to lose control over our emotions, depending on what's being said back and forth. If we entertain inappropriate stuff on social media, that can cause us to develop other habits that lead to more inappropriate stuff. The point I'm trying to make is this. Our temperance can only be developed based upon the environment we create for ourselves in our mind. Meaning we have no control on what happens on the outside when dealing with other people, or we can't control what people decide to put on the internet. But you can change how you deal with stuff inwardly. And through Christ, we have the power to control what we allow our minds to accept if we continuously keep our thoughts on the Lord. I pray this video bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all.